I want to really briefly go over this prioritization pyramid that we are going to be utilizing when we do each of these items. So you have probably heard um, over the years or just when you've been in nursing school, people say, oh, prioritization, just look for airway or just ABC. And although those general principles can help guide us, it's really not that simple. So once again, here at boot camp, we said, you know, we don't want to set you guys up for failure. We wanted to try to provide a little bit more context and a little bit more knowledge than just ABC. Um, so that's what we did with this prioritization pyramid. We used all our, our knowledge and of course those textbooks and tried to come up with a tool to help you navigate prioritization. So how this works is we start with step one. And when we look at a prioritization item and it's asking us to choose the sickest patient or the patient that needs to be seen first, we can always start with step one, which is eliminating the stable and the chronic issues. So right away, if we have four patients and we see one that is very stable, we can eliminate it. And let me give you an example of that. Say you have a client with a um, arm fracture and we, what kind of symptoms do we anticipate with an arm fracture? If you have a patient that comes in, they fell or tripped, and they have a, we anticipate a fracture to their wrist, what are some normal findings that you would expect? So pain and swelling, very, very normal findings, very stable, okay? So when we see a client with a fracture that's got pain and swelling, that shouldn't be concerning to us. Now, if you had a patient that had no pulses distal to the injury, or maybe they had, you know, numbness, those are all really concerning findings that we have decreased perfusion. But if we just see fracture with pain and swelling, that is a stable client and we can automatically eliminate them because they do not have any type of signs or symptoms that indicate a life-threatening issue. And then we also can eliminate chronic findings. So a great example of a chronic finding is let's take a patient with, let's say, advanced COPD or end-stage COPD. What would we anticipate in regard to their pulse oximetry level? Okay, so what would a normal pulse oximetry level be for a client with advanced COPD? So typically you can anticipate seeing about 88 to 92 percent. Now, if we took that same patient with a fracture and they had a pulse oximetry reading of 88 percent, I'm pretty worried. Okay, but for a client with advanced COPD, that is normal, that is anticipated, okay? So that's a chronic issue. Once again, I'm not seeing any indication that there is some sort of acute life-threatening condition going on. I just want to tell y'all, y'all are rocking it. Y'all are um, right on target with these answers so far. So then after we go through step one and we've eliminated any stable and chronic issues, we have to look at the rest of the clients that are there, or the rest of our options. And that's when we have to determine who really is the highest priority. Well, usually your highest priority clients are gonna be those with airway and safety issues because those are gonna, going to be what kills our patient fastest. And guys, that really is what prioritization is all about, is we have to ask ourselves, what is going to kill our patient fastest, okay? So airway and safety are typically our top priorities. Once again, though, um, that's as long as it's not a stable or chronic issue, okay? Followed by breathing, circulation, and disability. So just A, B, C, D. So a lot of times um, disability maybe isn't as commonly known, but disability just means neurological conditions, okay? A lot of times we see it in trauma nursing. It's, it's synonymous. It's the same thing, disability and neurological. So that's going to be a change in mental status, um, stroke symptoms, that, that type of thing is disability. And then our lowest priority our lowest priority needs, our lowest priority clients are gonna be up here in green, okay? And that's gonna be routine tasks. So maybe your morning AM labs that are ordered every day, any expected findings, and we kind of already talked about that, our COPD or that has a little bit of a decreased um, pulse oximetry reading, a fracture with pain and swelling. These are all expected. And then I might have colored too much. Let me erase just a tiny bit so you can see that. Also in green is gonna be psychosocial needs. And when I say psychosocial needs, I'm talking patients um, that are anxious, maybe they're angry, 
And certainly we want to use therapeutic communication. We want to address their concerns, but typically anxiety or anger is not going to kill you. So that is typically a lower priority. So this tool is um, certainly the more you practice with it, um, the easier it's going to be to understand it. And it is a wonderful, wonderful resource to navigate these types of prioritization items.